Hey guys, welcome to this video. My name is John Watts. I'm a consumer protection lawyer and I want to talk to you about when we're dealing with credit bureaus and we're suing credit bureaus for false credit reporting, there's this idea of negligence that comes up. So what does that mean? And I want us to look at it both in the context of false credit reporting, but also in a car wreck because that's easy for most of us to understand. So this concept of negligence is just absolutely critical to understand it in a variety of cases. So I'll give you a real quick background. I started practicing law in 1995, mainly focused on personal injury, car wrecks, wrongful death cases. And while I had sued the credit bureaus several times, uh, probably in about 2005 or so, maybe 2006, started doing that more. And the lawyers that defend the credit bureaus would say, hey, you don't know how to, you know, prosecute one of these cases because all you know how to do is personal injury. I thought that's very strange because it's the same standard. It's negligence. Well, now I do a lot of that and, and we still do wrongful death and personal injury cases. And sometimes the lawyers on in that world say, well, you don't know how to do a car wreck case, which is very strange because I've been doing them since 1995. But they say, well, all you know how to do is sue credit bureaus. Well, it's the same standard. It's negligent. So I want to illustrate this by looking at some pattern jury instructions. Now, these happen to be from Alabama because that's where I practice. But I want you to, to see these both for uh, doing negligence or a car wreck case, but also then how this helps us better understand how to push forward a case and how to prove a case against a credit bureau. So let's look here on the left-hand side, it's just a general charge that the jury is told for negligence. I won't read the whole thing, but you can see plaintiff says harmed by the defendant's negligent conduct. And to recover damages, there are three things the plaintiff, the one suing, must prove. Number one, the defendant was negligent. Number two, plaintiff was harmed. Number three, that the negligence was a cause of the plaintiff's harm. Well, we keep talking about negligent or negligence. What does that mean? Well, on the right-hand side, we have pattern jury instruction 28.01, negligence definition. Negligence is the failure to use reasonable care. Well, reasonable care to do what? To prevent harm to oneself or others. And then the second paragraph says person's conduct is negligent when he or she either does something that a reasonably prudent person would not do in a similar situation or fails to do something that a reasonably prudent person would have done in a similar situation. And then at the bottom of the screen, I just pulled this from an online dictionary. It's just sort of a standard definition of well, what does prudent mean? Acting with or showing care and thought for the future. So if I'm driving down the road and suddenly my windshield is totally cracked and I can't see, well, I, I could just say I'm living in the moment. I'm doing fine right now. But that's not what a prudent person would do. A prudent person would say, well, let me think a little bit into the future. Wow, this is going to be a problem. I can't see. Okay. So let's look at the example of a car wreck. These are jury instructions specifically for a car wreck. So 26 says duty owed by driver of motor vehicle. The driver of a motor vehicle must use reasonable care not to cause harm to others using public highway. Well, that'll sound very familiar, right? Because we're back here. Negligence is failure to use reasonable care to prevent harm to oneself or others. Now we've just sort of added the part about the public roadway. Well, here's an example, okay? Kind of like my cracked windshield. What if your vision is impaired? When something could be sunlight, fog, rain, your windshield's cracked. Maybe your windshield is iced over. You're like, but I'm late for work. I mean, I, I can't get the ice off my windshield, but I am late for work. Well, whatever that is, keeps a driver from seeing what is on or in the road ahead. You must operate your vehicle in a way that is reasonable in these conditions. So you can't say, well, you know, when I have perfect vision, I can drive 70 miles an hour down the interstate. Okay, but... If there's fog or if the sun's shining directly in your eyes or there's ice on your windshield and you can't properly see, then you have to slow down. Maybe stop. Okay, You have to act reasonably under the conditions. 
Well, let's look at a credit bureau. So when I say credit bureau, I mean Equifax, Experian, TransUnion, Innovus, these types of guys. So we have the FCRA section 1681I. So always remember, I is for investigation. When we ask the credit bureaus to investigate something, this is the standard we look at is 1681I. And this is the first part of it. It says, after you make a dispute to a credit bureau, the credit bureau or the agency shall free of charge conduct a, what type of investigation? A reasonable investigate. Now they call it re-investigation because supposedly they investigate everything before it ever goes on your credit report in the first place. So if then you bring up a dispute to them, they are re-investigating it. But the point is, it's reasonable. Okay, they have to do a reasonable investigation to determine whether the dispute information is inaccurate. Well, further down in this section, it says, now, even though this is what it says over here, a consumer reporting agency may terminate a reinvestigation if it, uh, uh, under paragraph, if the agency reasonably determines the dispute is frivolous or irrelevant. So put those two together. You make a dispute to a credit bureau, they have to do a reasonable investigation to see is this accurate or not accurate. But they can skip that if they determine that your dispute was frivolous or irrelevant. But that has to be a reasonable determination of that. Okay? Now, somebody says, well, John, nowhere in there does it say negligence. Well, here's where it says negligence. This is 15 USC section 1681O. So any person who is negligent in failing to comply with any requirement imposed under the subchapter, the subchapter is the Fair Credit Reporting Act, with respect to any consumer is liable to that consumer, and then we get actual damages, we get costs of the case, reasonable attorney's fees. So again, it's the idea of negligence. So if we are asking ourselves, has this credit bureau, have they violated the Fair Credit Reporting Act when they did not fix an error, well, we have to go back and say, did they do a reasonable investigation? Or maybe they just, they got my letter and they said, no, we're not going to even investigate it. Well, do they just get to do that with immunity? No. They can only say that it's irrelevant or it's frivolous if they reasonably determine. Well, what if they don't reasonably determine that? Or what if they don't do a reasonable investigation. Well, that's what we call negligence. And then we get actual damages, what in personal injury world we call compensatory damages to compensate you, to bring you back to where you were. So let's imagine that there's something false on your credit report. You dispute it. They won't fix it because they did not act reasonably. Okay. And remember some of these other uh, definitions here, you know, what is negligence? It's reasonable care, what a reasonably prudent person would do, okay? So they don't do that. And and they leave that false information. And then you go apply for a mortgage and you get turned down or you get a higher interest rate. Well, if they had done their job the right way, the credit bureau, then you would not have suffered that credit turn down or that higher interest rate. So what amount of money will it take to bring you back to where you were before they did the false credit reporting and the lousy investigation, the negligent investigation? And then also we have emotional distress damages. You know, it's very upsetting. Maybe you're supposed to get a house and now you can't get the house. Well, the jury has to compensate you for that if they find that those are actual damages you suffered. So my point is, Sometimes it's easier to understand what a law, maybe a little bit of a, a kind of obscure law, okay, uh, like the Fair Credit Reporting Act. Like, what does that mean? Well, let's think about it in terms of driving a car, because almost all of us either drive a car or we ride in a car. And so we understand the idea, hey, you have to be careful. You know, if, if we're riding with somebody and they're speeding and their headlights go out and it's at night, we're like, hey, hey, be careful, stop, we got to pull over. We understand this idea of being reasonable. So what about a, a credit bureau? Let's go back to this, for example, reasonable reinvestigation. And they say, 
you know, um, you, you sent us some court documents showing that a debt buyer sued you, somebody like Midland Funding, LVNV Funding, they sued you, and you are showing us the court documents that that, that case got thrown out. But we think maybe you forged those legal documents. You just made them up. Well, and, and I'm saying this because we've taken depositions of the credit bureaus where they make this argument. We go, well, did you call the court? No, no. Well, did you go online and pull the order yourself? No, 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 not at all. Well, did you write to the court and ask them? Nope, didn't do it. Well, did you call the collection lawyer and say, hey, is this order true that the case got thrown out? Nope. Well, you see, it's like, well, then how's that a reasonable investigation? Because a reasonable investigation would be doing what a reasonably prudent person would do. Well, what's a prudent person? Somebody that shows care, that thinks about the future. It says, well, let me look at this. I don't want to harm somebody. Remember some of these definitions here? Reasonable care to prevent harm to others? Well, if I'm telling a credit bureau there's false information and they don't really do anything, then are they showing reasonable, prudent care <clears throat> to make sure that I'm not harmed? No, they're being negligent. Well, what if they just go, you know what? Uh, COVID has hit. I'm recording this in November 2020. You know, we're in the middle of COVID and, uh, you know, we're getting more disputes and we don't want to hire new people. We don't want to spend money on our processes and our systems. So, you know what? Um, Anything that's more than a one-page dispute, just deem it to be frivolous. Well, is that being reasonable? Or is that more like driving down the road with your eyes closed? Like, you know, there's no way I'll hit somebody. No way I'll hit somebody. You know, and, and, and then you hit somebody. You go, know, who could have seen that? Well, if you had been reasonable, if you'd been prudent, if you'd opened your eyes, you would have seen it. So sometimes it's easier to illustrate when we're dealing with the credit bureaus to go back to sort of a more simple example of a car wreck. So hope that you found this helpful. And if you like this sort of stuff, we put out a new video basically every day and we'd love to have you join us and feel free to comment. Or if you know somebody that might find this helpful, feel free to share it with them. Okay, guys, you have a good one and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.